Hey, what's up everyone? And welcome to the next tutorial in this ongoing series. Now, in the previous two videos, we created our palindrome tester and our number guessing game. And with that, we started getting into use of our various if else statements and our while loops. And in order to control those in some cases, you're gonna to wanna to make use of these logical operators. So I'm just gonna take a step back here and kind of go over these once more in a little bit more detail. So our logical operators, we have logical AND, which is the double ampersand. We have logical OR, which is the double pipe. And logical NOT, or negation, which is the exclamation point. And then we have these more advanced logical operators, which are really called bitwise functions. And these are a lot more advanced, and you probably won't be using them, but I'll just kind of briefly go over those in a little bit more depth as well. But to start with, let's just go over the basics of the basic ones. Let's say in our code we make an integer x and we set it equal to 3 plus 4. Well, that assigns 7 into that x. And we'll have a Boolean flag set to true. So now if we evaluate these statements, we're testing in our if statement whether some condition is true. And if it is true, we're going to execute whatever statements fall inside of its scope. Otherwise, we'll execute whatever happens to fall inside the else statements here. Well, in this case, we're checking if x is equal to or is the equivalent to 7, which in this case it is, and our flag is true, which in this case it is, this statement is now going to get executed. However, if either one of these had been wrong, so if our flag had been false or if this had not actually been equal to 7, then we would be executing this statement and this one would never be executed. Okay, similarly, if we use the OR statement, we can say if x is equal to 5, which it certainly isn't, or if our flag is true, which it is, well, now we're going to execute this statement because either OR or both of these are true, then we're going to execute this, and in this case, at least one of them is. Otherwise, we would execute this. If x is not equal to 35, then we're going to execute this statement. And so in any case where x is not equal to 35, this would get executed. Otherwise, x would be 35, and our else statement would get executed. So since x is 7, it is not equal to 35, and we execute this statement. Now, that pretty much covers the basics of the um, basic operators, but if we wanted to start discussing these more advanced ones, um, sorry, let me just jump to this. Before we jump into it, I just want to go back to this primitive data type slide and show you that our main numeric value, we usually store into an int, which is a 32-bit signed integer value. But we also said that we had these other ones, which differ based on their bit set. So a byte is represented by 8 bits, a short 16 bits, and a long 64 bits. So for this little example I'm going to show you, we're going to be using a byte, which is 8 bits. So now if we quickly jump to this next slide here, we have a byte right here. One byte is 8 bits. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And these values can either be a 0 or 1. So this is going to be a quick lesson in binary as well for you. Now, in binary, we would take the first bit, and we represent it as 2 to the 0. So we can either have the decimal value 0, which is off, or if we were to put a 1 here, this would be on, and we would say, what is 2 to the 0? It's 1. Well, that's what that would represent. Now again, each of these going forward, we would have 2 to the 1, 2 squared, 2 to the 3rd, 2 to the 7th. And if we do all of these calculations out, 2 to the 0 is 1, 2 to the 1 gives you 2, 2 squared gives you 4, 2 to the 3rd gives you 8, 2 to the 4th gives you 16, 2 to the 5th gives you 32, and so on. 2 to the 7th is 128. If we were to continue on, 2 to the 8th would give us 256, and as you can see, each of these doubles as it goes on. So it's pretty easy if you just follow this pattern to really figure out what's going on. And I'll just note that uh, if we saw this bit pattern, we might go, well, what is this value here? 
we can quickly say, well, this is a 1 in the 2 to the 4th's place. 2 to the 4th is 16. There's no other bits turned on. So the value in decimal format that we're getting at here is actually 16. If we were to quickly just change one other bit, let's say we turned on this one, well, we would say we have 1, 2 to the 4th, so we have 16, plus 1, 2 squared, which is 4. So the overall value here would be 20. So I'll just reset these back again. And one question that we might get asked is, what is the maximum decimal value that you can store using 8 bits? Well, maybe it'll be 7 bits. It depends on the question. But no matter what, we can just take this 8 bits and extract it and say n equals 8. And we use this formula here, 2 to the um, 8th which in this case, the next one up, double this, 256, subtract 1 from that, 255. Well, the maximum decimal value that we can reach using 8 bits is 255. And really, it's 256 values, but the range is 0 to 255. And again, using 0 indexing, that comes out to 256 values. So... The slower way of doing this is 2 to the 8th isn't shown. We have 8 bits here. You can add all of these up. And if you were to add 128, 64, 32, 16, 8, 4, 2, and 1 together, you would come up with this value here, 256. So this is just a little shortcut and a formula that you can use. And so now let's declare an integer value, x equals 9. Now technically an integer is 32 bits, so actually what we mean to say is a byte, but um, we'll just keep it as int for now, just so you understand that this is an integer type value. And we have these 8 bits here, and this represents the integer 9. And as we can see, we have a 1 in the 2 to the 0 place, which is 1, and then 2 to the 1, 2 to the 2, 2 to the 3, 2 to the 3 is 8, we add 8 and 1, and we get the decimal value 9. So now if we use this left bit shift operator, what does this do? Well, we're taking another integer y, and we're storing into it x left bit shift 2. In other words, we want to shift left 2 bits. So I demonstrated that here a little graphically we took the 1 and we shifted it over two places the 0 the 0 this 1 shifted over and so now rather than 2 being in the 0 now we have 2 in the squared column which is 4 and now this 1 moves over to the 2 to the fifths column which gives us 32 we add 32 and 4 and this gives us 36 so this is how the bit shift operation works. And we can apply that to any bit pattern. But this starts getting into a lot of the really fundamental um, computer architecture and design functions. So it gets a little beyond the scope of these tutorials that I'm going to get into. But I just wanted to really go over them a little briefly. And there's one other slide that I can cover, which is the bitwise logical AND. So in Java, we have an integer as a 32-bit signed twos complement representation. Now, I'm not really going to get too far into this, as I just said, but if we want to apply the bitwise logical AND, which is a single ampersand, what this is saying is if and only if both values are true, i.e. both have a 1, then it is true. So what I want to do is I'll just show this. Here we have the decimal value 8 represented in binary format. And we have a 1 just in this one column here. And then we have the 2's complement representation of negative 8, which is 11111000. Now if we put these on top of each other and we connect their bits, we're going to apply this logical AND, which means if and only if both are true. So... In this case, is zero, I'm sorry, is this bit on or is it true? In this case, is it a one? No. So since we're using and, once none of them, or I'm sorry, once one of them are zero, we can just say, okay, this is going to be zero. 
Now again, we have a zero. We can instantly say they're not both going to be on. In this case, a zero, same thing again. Now we have a one here, so this is true. Now we have to check, is this one also true? If and only if both. Since both of them are true, now we copy this one down here. We have nothing here, even though we have one here, they both have to be one, so we just copy the zero, and we continue doing that. And by anding the positive value eight and the negative value eight, we actually result in the original positive eight value. And so this just demonstrates how these functions are working. I know it's a little bit um, far and advanced, but there may come a time later on where you'll find real actual uses for these types of operations. And I know of one offhand, actually, that we've kind of used, and it's inside of the random class. So if you were to go to Google and type in random Java and open that up, and specifically you want to look at the random method for next int that takes in a numerical value. If you look up the um, Javadoc explanation for this, it will tell you how it derives at a random number. And what it's doing in its initial check is a function like this. And the real purpose of it, again, is beyond the scope of any of this tutorial, but again, I just wanted to show you that all of this exists and it's a possibility that you might come across later on. So that's going to cover, I think, everything I wanted to go over with this tutorial, and I'll see you at the next tutorial.